Okay, so looking at mean from tables, Rosie has 10 boxes of drawing pins. She counted the number of drawing pins in each box. The table gives information about her results. Work out the mean number of drawing pins in a box. Well, obviously we know to find the mean, you add everything up and divide by how many there are from like year seven. So now we have a table, it's a bit different. Frequency, what this means is number of times it occurs. So number of times it occurs. So if we're looking at number of drawing pins, what it's trying to say is two boxes have 29 drawing pins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a list and I'm going to write 29 twice. Now... The next thing is that we have five boxes which have 30 drawing pins. So I'm going to write 30 five times. 30, 30, 30, 30. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. 30. Okay, five times. And now we've got 31 drawing pins are in two boxes. So 31, 31. And then one box has 32. And as it says, there are 10 boxes. So to check that we've done this right, you should have 10 numbers listed over here. And the frequency should add up to 10. Now to find the mean, all you've got to do now is add up everything and divide by 10. So if I do this, I get... Just typing it into my calculator. 30.2. So mean is 30.2. Now this seems this seems like an okay method if we have like a short list like this. But when lists become longer and longer, it becomes impractical. So we're gonna need to look at another way to do this. Okay, so looking at this new method it requires us to draw another part of this table. Normally, the thing that we have, so in this case, number of drawing pins, we call that variable x. And in the frequency, which is the number of times it occurs, you call that f. So this new box here is going to be f times x, which we can just write as fx. We know that 29... Um, the number of drawing pins in a box being 29 occurs twice. So two boxes have 29 pins. So when you would find in the mean from a list, you would have done 29 plus 29. But here, we could just write that as 29 times 2. And if you do 29 times 2, you get 58. And then the 30 listed five times, you would have done 30 plus 30 plus 30, so on, five times. But here, we're just going to times it. 30 times 5, and it just does the calculation straight away, 150. And then 31 times 2, instead of writing 31 plus 31, gives us 62. Ooh. 62. And then 32 only appears once, so it's just 32. Now what we can do is we can add this fx column, which gives us 58 plus 150 plus 62 plus 32, which is 302. And then the total frequency we can add, which is 2 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1, which is 10. And now to find your mean, you can do your added fx values, which is 302, divided by your total frequency, which is 10, which equals 30.2. Right, so now let's look at more formal notation. So the mean is sometimes referred to as x bar, which is basically the letter x and a bar above it. So if you see this notation, this means the mean. And what we did is we added these fx values, or f times x, and we divided it by 
the sum of the frequencies, which is F. What you can do to show that you're adding them is add this symbol here. This symbol is a Greek letter, sigma, capital sigma. And what it refers to is a sum. So it means you're adding up all your FX values and you're dividing it by adding all the F values or all the frequency values. So now let's look at another question using this notation. So we have the table shows information about the number of points scored in a game. Work out the mean number of points per game. Well, points could be X and frequency is always F, F for frequency. So now we need to write our FX column, which you get by multiplying everything together. Zero times nine is zero. One times 11 is 11. Two times 18 is 36. Three times seven is 21. Four times four is 16. And five times one is five. Now, remembering we're going to add our FX values, which you can write as this sigma FX, which means the sum of FX. 0 plus 11 plus 36 plus 21 plus 16 plus 5 is 89. And your sum of F is 9 plus 11 plus 18 plus 7 plus 4 plus 1 is 50. And we know our mean, which is X bar, is the sum of FX divided by the sum of f so in this case our mean is 89 divided by 50 and that is 1.78 so our mean number of points is 1.78 okay so now we have adam is um what's he doing he's measuring the height in centimeters of his tomato plants estimate the mean height give your answer correct to one decimal place now we have a bit of a problem because we don't have any exact values with the heights because height is an example of a continuous variable so what can we do in this case when you're given when you are presented with continuous data what we what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume that all these heights are uniformly distributed within each interval which means there's an equal distribution and we're going to use the midpoints as an average for our estimate so instead of 140 and 150 we don't know the exact values we're just going to use an estimate by taking the middle value which is 145 and then 150 and 160, we're going to use the midpoint, which is 155. And then 165. And then 175. And then 190. Because these are exactly in the middle. To find, if you're not good at spot in the middle straight away, you can just add them. 140 at 150. And divide it by 2. And that will tell you, split in the middle, what number we're looking for. Now that we've got that, we can do calculations as normal. So we have our, oh, oh, let me try that again. We have our FX table over here. And you continue as normal. You multiply everything. 145 times 7 is 1015. 155 times 10 is 1550. 165 times 15 is um, 2,475. 175 times 19 is 3,325. And 190 times 9 is 1,710. Now, let's sum our FX values by adding them all up together. So 1,015 plus 1,550 plus 2,475 plus 33, 
I think that's the zero. Yeah. We have one, whatever number this is, let me write it out first. 10,075. And we want our sum of F, which is adding up the frequency. We have 7 plus 10 plus 15 plus 19 plus 9. Our frequency is 60. Did that tell us in the question? No, it didn't. Okay. So now our X bar, we know it's our sum of FX. 10,075 divided by our sum of F, which is 60. So now I'm going to go into my calculator and write that in. And I get the an answer of 167.9 centimetres. Correct to one decimal place. Sometimes you may be asked to part, explain why your answer to part A is an estimate. Well, if you think, in part A, we had a continuous um, grouped data and we had to use the midpoints to estimate. So you basically just translate that into writing. A is only an estimate. Only an estimate. Because... The data is grouped slash continuous. We used the midpoints. To estimate. exact values of the heights are unknown. Something like that. I feel like I've written way too much than what I need to do. All you basically need to say is the data is grouped slash continuous and exact values of the heights are unknown. This bit where we said we used the midpoints to um, estimate. You can write that because it adds a bit more detail to it, but I don't think it will be 100% essential in mark schemes. Okay, now let's end on this one. No new skills needed. Michael recorded the maximum temperature every day in September. The table shows information about his results. Calculate an estimate for the mean maximum temperature. So... Gonna get my FX column ready. Midpoints of 14 to 18. Well, 14 plus 18 divided by 2, or you can quite clearly see it's 16. 18 to 20 would be 19. 20 to 22, 21. And then 22 to 24 would be 23. And then 24 to 28 would be 26. So here are our estimates. Our estimated temperatures by finding the midpoint. Now we're going to find our fx by multiplying these all together. So 16 times 4 is 64. 19 times 10 is 190. 21 times 8. Ah, 21 times 8 is 168. 23 times 5, 115. 26 times 3 is 78 so now let's sum our fx by adding them all together so 64 plus 190 plus 168 plus 115 plus 78 is 615 and our frequency sums up to 14 plus 8 plus 5 plus 3 30 so our mean is our sum of fx divided by our sum of f. 615 divided by 30 is 20.5 degrees Celsius. 
And that's it for calculating the mean from group frequency tables.